evening from New York. I am Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS Journeys. Thank you for joining us. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, CWS Journeys is about having conversations with people about their journey and how they use their gifts and talents to help others. I invite people to share their stories because I think it is important not only to talk about your successes, but your challenges and how you overcame them. Imagine someone listening to you, especially a young person, and recognizing similar limitations, similar challenges in their own lives. And because you are a success today, because you have explained how you overcame some of your challenges, that person one day becoming a person of note, a person who can make a positive contribution to humanity. And this is why I believe we are never more connected than when we share our stories. This evening, I have an amazing young man that I met recently. He's, um, he's an entrepreneur. His name is David Jormin. Um, he's a native New Yorker, a very young real estate franchise owner who is very passionate about what he does and is eager to grow his company. But hear this, by bringing other people along. I am going to bring, bring on, on David. 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 Good, Good evening, evening and welcome, welcome to CWS Journeys. Well, thank, thank you, thank you, so and, um, I just want to give my creator, God, the glory, all the glory, you know. Um, without God, I wouldn't be here, so thank you. Awesome, so, amen. amen. David, you were recently, but first let me congratulate you on being one of the honorees for a young, young gifted and black awards uh, of our organization. You were a recipient of the 2016 award. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. What, what does this award mean to you? Wow, you know, it's one of these awards where, you know, you as a kid, you know, growing up on welfare and growing up in the hood and you see so many people who become successful and, you know, I'm not even supposed to be here, you know. People who come from where I come from, you know, they're either in jail or they get locked up or, you know, they get shot, you know. And to see that I'm actually here speaking with you, winning an award uh, for the Young, Gifted, and Black Entrepreneurial Awards. I mean, during Black History Month at that, you know, with so many people who have come before us, you know, to pay homage to even be among one of the honorees, you know, some of the people who won this award are some real significant people. And um, I'm really humbled and I'm honored and I will definitely take this award seriously and I want to pass that torch so it's all good. So it's really humbling. I want to ask you a basic question about yourself, but I, I want to keep it, you know, a little differently. What, what, what do the people closest to you say about you or get, get right about what they say about you? Well, anybody who knows me um, knows that I walk by faith and not by sight. I like you that. know, I'm, I'm unapologetic about the God that I serve, and um, without Him, I wouldn't be here. So, first and foremost, I always give credit to where credit is due, which is uh, my Father, Jesus Christ. So, with that being said, you know, with the people who are sitting close to me, they probably say, you know, um, as my partner says, knowing and believing. You know, you have to know and you have to believe that, you know, whatever you're doing is going to come to pass. And you got to speak things into existence. And I'm a big believer in the power of words. Words yeah. definitely have power. Yeah, but you, you started off by mentioning your faith, on walking by faith and walking by sight. Mm -hmm. This relationship with us, um, was this always this close? You know, honestly, it wasn't. Um, how I got this relationship, um, one day my mom, God rest her soul, she was struck with cancer. And when she got struck with cancer in the hospital, um, she was more worried about my salvation than she was worried about her cancer. And she told me that, you know, she wants me to have a better relationship with God because she was a devout Christian and she was a devout, she served God day, noon, and night. And I've seen how, I didn't understand it at the time, you know, but now I understand 
you know, why she was the way she was. And pretty much when she was in the hospital, you know, I'm trying to help her in the hospital by playing gospel music for her. And I'm not even a big gospel fan at that time. And I'm playing, you know, just so that her environment in the hospital um, was conducive to her so that she can, you know, feel comfortable. And here I am playing the music for her, not realizing that the music started ministering to me because I started hearing the words and what they were saying, what they were singing. And it just touched my heart. And everything that I was going through, at that time, which is one of the most, I mean, it was actually one of the worst times in my life. You know, when you lose anybody, you can relate. When you lose a loved one close to them, that right there is where I started having my relationship with God. And I saw life different. David, you grew up in Brooklyn. Yep, all my Born life. New Yorker. Brooklyn. <laughs> would you tell us, would you give us a glimpse into your life, growing up in New York as a, at the ages of nine and then at 16. Wow. Well, um, I'm 39 years old, and anybody who's been a Brooklynite from the old Brooklyn, you know, there's the old Brooklyn, now the new Brooklyn. And the old Brooklyn, you know, growing up in the 80s and the 90s during the crack era, um, you know, I remember seeing the guys that I looked up to were the drug dealers, and the people who got respect were the, were the drug dealers and the guys with the flashy cars and all the girls. And um, during that time, it was very, very tough, you know, because, you know, if you didn't, you didn't have respect, if you didn't have things or you didn't have like a four finger gold, you know, gold ring or something like that. And, you know, the, the, the chains and the door knockers for the girls and, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, growing up, you know, my mom was on welfare. And we didn't have much, and I had rejects, and people used to call me Holy David. It's funny now they call me Holy David, but I mean, I really had holes in my jeans, and I had to share everything I had. But growing up in that time, it was really uh, a time that I could remember clearly and vividly um, growing up in that old Brooklyn. And you had to be tough. You know, if you weren't tough, you wasn't going to make it. Uh, and so, what is your favorite memory? Is it okay to ask for tomorrow? Yes. All right. What is your favorite memory of your parents? Uh, my favorite memory of my parents. My mom waking up every morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and she would have these morning conversations with me and, you know, talk about how, was my, how did God bless you this week? You know, or how did God bless you this day? And, you know, she was always just grateful. And, you know, I don't even know, you know, the things that she went through in her life. But I can tell you, you know, being an immigrant from, um, she's from Jamaica. So big up to all my yard people, um, you know, coming here to America just so that she can have a better opportunity. You know, people travel on boats and, you know, risk their lives just to come here for that word, opportunity. And she came here leaving everything that she knew behind and was a trailblazer and pretty much for the opportunity to make it here. And she definitely, definitely left a legacy. If, if she were was alive today, what would you be telling her you were most grateful for? First, having a relationship now with my Lord and Savior, because now I was once blind, but now I see. Um, I see now having this relationship, the peace, and, you know, really serving God, because it's not about us, you know. We, we come into this world being selfish, and um, we think it's all about us, and this world is not about us, you know. We come here to serve. We're just passing through. So, that's yeah, pretty you, much. You grew up in a time, an era, and then Fatbush was right with all kinds of Ooh. crimes and cracks and all these things. Yeah. Um, even Jesus was tempted mm -hmm. and he resisted. And, and you were saved, you know, you made this transformation. But there are times when our humanity really wrecks out on, on, on where we want to go spiritually and, you, you know, you get oh, tempted. Yeah. Is there a time, can you share with us a time, not what happened, but when you were really challenged and you had to call upon all of your strength mm -hmm. and faith to really get you through. 
Well, um, people used to call me nine lives, right? A lot of people don't know I got hit by a car. And thank God I don't look like it, you know? I'm still, <laughs> you know, I'm not deformed or anything like that. I actually have, you know, missing teeth. I have false teeth. I have a steel plate in my jaw. You know, um, that right there, that accident, I was out the whole year for school and I had to be homeschooled. And I saw the compassion in people when I was hit by a car that year where I almost lost my life. And pretty much everybody in the school came to the hospital and actually wrote cards. And that showed me that, you know, God still loves me, even though I was destitute and I had a halo around my neck and my face looked like a watermelon and I couldn't even recognize myself. You know, I kind of feel like Kanye West a little bit. He mm -hmm. understands, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and my jaw being wired shut and I couldn't talk. And when I saw what I looked like in the mirror and I'm like, wow, you know, I can't believe I ever made it, you know, because most people get hit by a car, they don't make it. And I, and I made it. This amazing woman, that you have the privilege and honor to call her mom, her mother, mm -hmm. that asked you to tell you, to tell her um, some grateful things, some things you were grateful for, or how you were blessed and so on. Um, I, I can, can imagine that she had, she had many words of wisdom for you. Do you remember well, any she that has helped to shape who you are today? She is a wise person, you know, very wise beyond her years. And I guess it's because, you know, she was just a prayer warrior. She read her Bible every day and, you know, she was very wise. You know, like Solomon, which was one of the wisest men who wrote Proverbs, you know, very wise. Any particular saying she had that you remember? Um, her favorite saying every day was walk with the king. Walk with the king. Walk with the king. And that's actually on her grave site. You know, we walk actually wrote that. Walk with the king. Was she quick with Oh, <laughs> yes. You know, anybody <laughs> you know, spare the rod, right? They don't spare the child. So, you know, you know, it's funny that you say that. Um, I used to get beaten every day because <laughs> I was a terror. I, to this day, I'm a little hard-headed and I was a hard-headed kid mm. and um, she whipped me a lot and if it wasn't for those beatings, you know, I probably wouldn't have been the disciplined person I am now. Do you meet your grandmother? Is she still alive? Um, unfortunately, my grandmother passed in 2004 um, from cancer as well. Cancer. Um, I knew her and she was also the matriarch in the family mm -hmm. and she taught my mother, you know, so many uh, things that to this day I can't believe I'm even starting to sound like my mother to this day, you know. If, if you were to eat drop these two women, these two powerful women, your grandmother and your mother, mm -hmm. telling a stranger of you, describing you, what do you think each of them would say? How would they describe you? Well, the early David, they would say, this David, he's crazy. Um, you know, the David that used to get in trouble and do all the crazy things, you know. So to see this David right here that's talking to you right now, they'll really be proud. Yeah. You know, they say, wow, he's really matured and he's calmed down and he takes life seriously. Now. Awesome. Yeah. You wish, wish they were around. Yes. I actually wish that they were here just to witness this. Mm -hmm. You know, I miss her daily. I think about her every day, you know, but, you know, um, life still goes on. I realize that, you know, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So, you know, David, as, as, as you created this particular stream, mm -hmm. um, this this spiritual stream, I want to go in here for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you have this name, David. Yeah. You used to call you Holy David. <laughs> um, and you have this very strong mother from mm -hmm. Jamaica, born in Jamaica and so on, and who really believed a lot in God. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back to Sunday school where you ever stood alive. It's funny, my mother told me that story so many times. What is a Goliath in your life? Goliath. Um the biggest Goliath I can think of for for me is fear. Mm -hmm. You know, fear and if I could think of David and King David, mm. he was fearless. Even when Goliath, who was 
you know, who had everything, you know, everything in his body is probably saying, you know what, I can't beat this guy. And he came in with the fear, uh, with the with the belief that he can definitely beat this guy. And I think that's my biggest goal because I let fear at one point in my life overtake me as well. And not at this time, now I'm fair. Well, you know fear is disorder that's gas. Mm. That sometimes wrecks havoc on our psyche. Sees up on us. Yes. What do you do when a fear sees up and you recognize it? Well, that's the good thing, you know, because when you think about it, fear, when you think of the opposite, what's the opposite of fear? And the opposite of fear is faith. Mm -hmm. And faith as Martin Luther King said, is taking the first step without seeing the whole staircase. In the Bible, Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for and not seen. We don't see air, but we know that it's there. We know you don't see the wind, but you can feel it. So you have to have faith even when you take the train. You have hope that the conductor you know, is not on crack and he can take you to where you're going, you know, or when you fly on the plane, you don't know. So you have to have faith. And once you have faith, you start to be fearless. Mm. What, what is it exactly? I just want to shift a little. You do for a living, Oh, um, I'm a realtor with Rapid Realty. Um, pretty much uh, now I'm a franchise owner. And pretty much I help anybody who's looking for apartments, commercial spaces looking to start their own business, people who are first time or second time or third time homeowners, and I also work with investors who are looking to buy properties and short sales and things of that nature.